Hey everybody, it's Peter and this one is going to be super fun because normally I review motorcycles, side-by-sides, ATVs, some snowmobiles and that kind of thing and of course motorcycles is kind of the focus of this channel but every now and then I come across something that's super unique and the more I dig into it the more I love it and that's what this is. So this is the 2024 Argo Aurora 950 Huntmaster. Basically this is an amphibious vehicle that is the top of the line, most power and it does so many cool things. It's it's just something that is absolutely worth at least knowing about if not uh, if it's not perfectly fit for you. So it kind of competes in that side-by-side -side market but it really is an entirely different animal. So in this review we're going to go completely through this top-of-the-line amphibious vehicle and tell you about all the cool features in it, the cool technology in it that make it different and I think you'll be surprised because I kind of sort of wrote this off as kind of a slow moving kind of boring vehicle but they're actually kind of well they're just a lot quicker, a lot more fun, a lot better and they're just just an absolute joy to ride in to drive and you can do so many things so again it's almost less about the vehicle it's more about what you can do with it but it's the technology in the vehicle that allow you to do that thing and it's just super cool so I'm filming here at McLean Sports here in Fredericton New Brunswick if you want to see this in person or the entire lineup you can come check it out here there's a link in the description but the other thing is if you're not near here and you just want to know more about these do me a favor and like this video comment on it kind of give it some love because the more interest that you show on this the more I get to spend time with these kinds of things and we'll put more and more out there for you so if you want to know more about something that I don't cover in this video make sure you let me know in the comments below because although I'm not a full expert on this vehicle the people here at McLean's are and they'll allow me to keep coming back to this vehicle again and again and again to make sure that you get the information you need and if I get to learn more about it every day that's a pretty cool day for me as well so let's get going with the review all right, so before I review this in full, we gotta talk about what this kind of is and also sort of what's uh, standard and what's optional. First, So first of all, this top piece here with these roll down windows, I've got them rolled up right now. All of this could roll up, so you could just have the top, you could have it fully covered, as uh, sort of a rain cover type thing in the snow, it works straight too, keeps you kind of insulated from all the weather. Uh, or like I said, you can roll them up. So that's an accessory on this and so are the tracks. The rest of the pieces and parts on here for the most part are part of this trim package. So again, you can, strip this down to lower trim packages and have less brush guards and that kind of thing. Again, all this stuff we're gonna show you in the video, but this one has a few options that just kind of make it really interesting. So what is this? Well, first of all, like I said, the tracks are optional. So what you have is an eight wheeled vehicle. It's got four wheels like this, and then the tracks give you sort of an extra option for, tra for traction. So first of all, the thing you need to know is one of the cool things about having these wheels, and in this case, the tracks on, is the pounds per square inch, the weight that it puts down on the ground is less than one pound per square inch. So 0.88 pounds per square inch with these tracks on. And again, not a whole lot different with the wheels on. So it really spreads that weight out and allows you to tread pretty lightly. Now you may think, okay, this is like a skid steer type operation. And it really is. There's no turning wheels on this. It kind of works like a skid steer. At least that's the way to think about it. But the operation of it, the way you control it, and actually the way it's, um, those wheels move is also completely different. We're gonna get to that in this video as well because it's a really unique way of kind of going around this but then again if you take these tracks off this becomes not just an off the road vehicle but an off the land vehicle you can go in the water so this thing will go you know people think these things are slow but this thing with this top uh, 950 v twin engine with the most horsepower and most, most torque in this lineup can go about 40 kilometers an hour 25 miles an hour but when the tracks are off and it goes into the water, it still goes basically kayak speeds through the water. So you can kind of move across slowly in swampy areas, whether it's mud that you're going through or mud that turns into water, whatever it is, this thing's got all kinds of traction that can go through. And then the wheels themselves are pretty cool. They're just small little nine inch hubs in there and they are beadlocked. So there's steel wheels here, nine inch wheels that are beadlocked on there. So they can really kind of take that traction and that, uh, you know, that pushing around that you're gonna have and then of course these wheels, the tread on them is actually what propels you through the water allowing you to continue on going anywhere. And that means that this vehicle could be used for just about anything. It can be, you know, there's pictures on their website of people fishing out of it. There's people that can go on a trail, people that can go off a trail. And again, that 40 kilometer an hour, 25 mile per hour really puts you around trail speed with other side by side. Sure, it's not the top speed, but 
You can turn off those trails and you can tread lightly on different kind of land, especially if you have property where you don't have the trails, and then you can head through those swampy areas. So a place like Canada, especially in the spring, it can go through the snow like this. You can take those treads off when the snow melts and you can go through the land. And when it gets swampy, snow melt, all kinds of things, you can handle it and you can go through. So now let's take a look at some of the options and then we're gonna take a look at how this thing operates and look at some of the specs for utility because it's really a great utility vehicle as well. So one of the coolest views of this thing is the front. When you've got these tracks on, they give it a little extra width and it just looks like an absolute monster truck coming your way. So out front, again, we talked about the utility of this and it's actually really practical. So the winch is mounted very high, which is kind of nice for just general off-road use. You can really kind of take advantage of, um, you know, having high, easy to reach. If you're buried in mud kind of thing, it's up closer to you. It's not kind of buried in the mud with it. But of course, that's also useful for when you go into the water. Now, remember, this thing is basically kind like kayak speeds through the water so it's not a speedboat through the water so you can use the winch whether you're in the water or whether you're on land if you're in just a you know puddly type area you can uh, use this and again easy to reach and if you had to stand in hip waders or something like that to get to this you could do that while it's floating because again it's going to be higher up if you're into the water so having the three three thousand pound winch out front that's a really nice feature and that's standard on this trim line. The other thing that's standard is this rack here. So again, this windshield is part of an option. That windshield could fold down onto the rack. You could have that open air experience, but you could also have no windshield at all. And then you have the rack here. Now the rack is useful because there's also kind of like a pickup truck bed in the back. And when you think about anything going in water, you kind of want to balance the weight. So you can put some weight up front if the weight balance isn't right when you're heading into the water. So having a really strong rack up here, kind of a nice feature to have, especially if you're thinking about heading off of land onto water just gives you the option to balance things out lots of tie down points lots of things that you can have accessible and then you've got cool things like these uh, lights here they're the projector beam style lights so automotive style lights automotive quality type lights um, that again mounted nice and high nice sharp cut off beam really bright lights there as well high and low beam as well so very um, very ATV like or side by side like what's different is when you go under here again this tub floats you've got great ground clearance and you haven't got a whole lot of things to get snagged on so no suspension components no brake lines no that kind of thing so you really have an advantage off-road coming into anything if it's just a muddy kind of slope that you're coming up to you've got the crash bar you've got a body that can take it underneath so you've got really just nothing to get snagged on nothing to grab onto even just the grasses and other stuff on the edges of sort of swampy areas all of that flows underneath because the bottom is like a boat it's even got a bilge pump built into this so it's treated like a boat let's go to the back and look at some of the utility there and then we're going to start walking through this thing and looking at the controls and talking about mechanically how things work which may or may not be interesting to you but what's cool is because of the unique mechanicals it actually makes it more enjoyable to drive and gives you some more capability as a driver so taking a look at the back here, you can see you've got that pickup truck style bed. We're going to zoom into that in a second. There's some nice tie downs. There's lots of stuff to talk about there. Bright uh, rear lights there as well to keep you extra visible. We're going to talk about some of that stuff, but let's start by looking down. Again, those tracks are just super cool. You can sort of see how they're connected there with that hinge type mechanism. What we're really looking at, again, those tracks removal, what we're really looking at today is, or right now, is in the center of your screen right now, we're going to zoom right in, you also have a hitch. So again, this thing gives you great towing capacity of 1800 pounds and again because it has that eight wheels of traction you've got great traction to actually tow a trailer through the terrain that you're going to use this in so it's not so much about the overall towing capacity is the fact that you can actually tow whatever you're towing uh, you know if you had to drag it through let's say it's a boat type thing you could drag it through mud and let it float through the water or you can put something with wheels on there and pull it through and again that 950 v twin engine giving you plenty of power plenty of torque to do that towing now let's move a little bit closer and we're going to talk about this tub in here because that's actually removable you have a couple options with that let's talk about what you can do with that all right, so I'm filming with a wide angle camera right now. So that means that everything's a little skewed to the edges, but you kind of get a sense of what's going on here. You kind of get a sense of where you are. So a nice flat back here. Again, every, the water is really not designed to come up over this uh, rail here. So all of this stays dry. This is a tub where you can throw water in. There's no drain holes or anything in that. So that also can keep uh, you know, water out, other things in, everything you need. And then you have one, two, three, four tie downs here. And there's also sort of accessory um, pieces down here. I don't know if you can see them. Let's kind of zoom into some of those right now. Actually, let's go fully zoomed in to what we're looking at here, right like this. So what you have is a number of four tie downs like this on the back side, but you also have a number of these around the outside. And that is part of the accessory um, for the sort of convertible top type thing. A lot like sort of a Jeep top is how it feels to me, a Jeep uh, soft top. So you have those tie downs along the way 
Uh, you can sort of see more just over there and that kind of thing. So that is the outside, but the inside is unique as well. Again, pretty typical bed here, but if you'll notice, this has basically the two seats up front. Maybe you could fit a third person in there if you had to. But what this is, is actually, although it looks like a two passenger, it's actually a six passenger. So what you can do here is you can take this tub out. It comes out and then there's a seat in here. So if you are a rear seat passenger, you're actually sitting sideways with your knees out here and your feet down there. And you can have um, the same thing on the opposite side. So what that means is seating this way facing and seating this way facing. So again, legs up and then body up here um, facing each other. So instead of sitting forward, you're sitting sideways. One, that's just a cool seating position, but that allows you to have a six passenger uh, vehicle here. Now, one thing of note, it is a six passenger vehicle on land. It becomes a four passenger vehicle on the, um, on the water. And what that means is basically it's a 950 pound capacity on land, 750 pound capacity on water. And again, that makes sense to most of us. It just balances things out uh, weight wise. And again, if it's just two people, you could also stand back here. Cause again, that tub drops down uh, when this tub's gone to have a sort of a deeper area where you could sort of stand. And again, it's very stable in the water. So before we hop inside and take a look at the controls, let's talk about how some of these things work. There is a special braking type system into these wheels that allow it to sort of spin. So you may notice there's a handlebar instead of two separate levers, like your maybe your you know, zero turn lawnmower is gonna have the two levers or skid steer, that kind of thing. They're gonna have the levers. This is a different design. It allows for that handlebar type control. What that means is when it's in high range gearing, because it does have high range and low range gearing, it steers and feels a lot like a side by side, although it is sort of a unique feeling, but it kind of turns normally sort of S turning around. When you're into the low gear, that's when you can sort of do that spin on itself, that zero turn type thing using those handlebars. So it's a really unique system that ties it. And again, we can dig into the technology of it another way, but it is a unique system separate from a skid steer. One of the key benefits that it does is when you think about a handlebar versus the levers, your you know, typical skid steer kind of thing would go forward, turn, you know, you know, 45 degrees, go forward, turn 45 degrees, go around, that kind of thing. This allows you to do a proper circular turn. So it really to turn in a circle the same way a wheel, a, you know, front wheel steering vehicle would do. So again, while it handles different, it's very intuitive. So you can go around trails and not have that skid and move and skid and move. It's just an even thing. So it's not really a skid steer. It has a variable rate uh, brake system that allows you to have a very smooth driving experience. That is a change from older versions of this and that really makes it a lot more drivable and really kind of brings it into that side-by-side -side kind of feeling thing. So while it is unique, it is not like a um, skid steer. So that's one thing worth pointing out. And again, like I said, high gear won't allow it to spin on itself. So it's not like you can crank the wheel and also it spins on itself and you have a really unstable vehicle. It's the low range gearing, the slow speed gearing that allows you to have that spin on itself to allow you to maneuver where there's no trails. The higher speed gearing when you're going faster isn't going to and have it spin on itself and tip itself over because uh, that would be a concern. So really smart the way they do it. You can read up about that on their website, uh, but really how it works is basically it's very intuitive. Turn that handlebar, it's gonna turn like you expect it to, but if you're lowering hearing, it can spin. All right, so now we're gonna hop inside this vehicle. Now, the one thing you'll notice is there's no doors. And again, that's because so much of this is wheels. That's the tub that's kind of the boat piece of this or the, uh, you know, the water can ride on the water kind of feel of this. So because the tracks are on, it's gonna be pretty easy to climb in. If not, you can step on those tires as well. I am climbing in through the passenger side, not the driver's side, but again, we'll just sort of show you what you've got here. So you do have a bench seat. There is a little bit of a separation here. So the, it comes out. So again, you could use this as a third person for a seat, probably a little bit more suited for a child. It's a little bit narrower, but you know, a smaller adult would easily fit there as well. Lots of places to hold on. And that's really gonna matter on something like this because again, you're not limited to just trails here. So you've got the rails to hold on there. You've got the extra hand grips to hold on here. And again, you can be going off of trails onto, you know, unprepared land and in and out of water. So again, having all of that, you need a lot of places to hang on and this has that. So again, I'm gonna climb in a little awkwardly. We're not gonna cut it. I'm just gonna show you uh, a little weird to do with a camera. We are gonna go fully wide angle for a second and there is a little bit lower light in here because I got the roof on. So bear with my uh, shaky camera work and quality here. Now, inside here, let's just take a look at the tub. You've got the, uh, let's see if I can flip around here. So you've got that sort of 
area there and you can see the nice deep tub in here. There is no gas pedal, there is no brake pedal. It's controlled a little bit like a snowmobile, a little bit like a, um, you know, maybe motorcycle, that kind of thing. So we'll go wide angle again and kind of, whoops, let's go fully wide angle here. Oh boy, I'm having trouble here. There we go. Fully wide angle here. And again, we are working in lower light condition, so bear with me, but uh, you see what you've got here. Brake over here, and then you have a trigger throttle over here. So that's sort of your throttle. Again, if I was grabbing it with my right hand, my right hand's on the camera right now. Um, that's why you can't see that. And again, a little bit of uh, adjustability here because again, these are, you know, you can loosen those off. You can tilt this towards you, but a very comfortable position and very familiar, even though it's not a steering wheel, you know, I think everybody, would understand how to drive this. Now, of course, you got your parking brake over there. The high and the low range gearing is right there. So low and high range, uh, pretty easy high is up top. And what that does is again, the low range is gonna allow the vehicle to spin on itself. The high range is gonna allow you to go faster. It's gonna allow you to have more speed and it will not spin on itself, which of course, as you're coming into a corner, you crank this handlebar over, you wanna make sure that you're not instantly spinning at say 40 kilometers an hour because that would create a problem. So really smart engineering in there. Again, how it works I think is less important than, or how the mechanicals of it work is less important than what it does. One of the cool things down here is the uh, keychain here. That is a typical floating keychain because again, this can go in the water, so why not? So there's your key. We're gonna turn to the on position for a second here. You're gonna hear a fan pump up there. Let's see if we can kind of get this to focus down there. So again, this was sitting outside, probably needs to be uh, cleaned up a little bit. Uh, so you've got a tack that revs to 6,000 RPM, or at least the indicates to 6,000 RPM. You've got a clock in here. Again, I'm having trouble getting the camera to focus perfectly on there. We are in Canada, so you're gonna see a um, kilometers per hour uh, speed rating there, fuel gauge on the right, mileage on the bottom, uh, a couple other stuff in there. And of course, warning lights everywhere. This is flashing yellow and orange, or yellow and red right there. So hard to show some of that on camera. Over to the right side there, let me see if I can come underneath here. Oops, let's just go wider angle again. That's what I was trying to show you is the USB uh, port right there. Let's turn that uh, noise off for a second there. So there's a USB port right there and then you can add accessories. So again, whether it's a light bar, whether it's something else. Now again, this one does come with the winch. So if we kind of come down here, uh, these are lit up as well when we start the vehicle, but you have the winch in and out, pretty simple. And then a bilge pump as well, again, because this is a full boat over down below that, there is the key there. So pretty easy to see. And just so we zoom out, you can see where we are there's sort of your gauge cluster right there. So pretty simple stuff. Overall, the view on this thing, even with this top on is excellent. So again, the side views here, you have the plastic windows. I have them up uh, and open, where you can zip those shut. That's gonna keep you pretty warm in here as well. There's some insulating factor there for sure. Um, and then you have the, I wouldn't say it's glass, but it's a plastic solid, um, whereas this is plastic um, flexible. This resembles glass, although it's definitely plastic as well out front. And visibility is very, very good. As you can see, there's sort of that tub type thing there. And then again, if you had people in the back, you would have seats with the drop down. So remember it can drop down in there. So you have the seats back there and tons of room. So a lot of space to take your gear. Let's flip the camera around for one second. I'll show you a headroom. So even with this accessory top on, I've got tons and tons of room. I'm about six feet tall, sitting nice and square. Again, if I wanted to wear a helmet on this, lots and lots of room. So it's just very, very spacious feeling. And again, the bench seat is comfortable. And again, one of the things I like about this uh, system is because I don't have to have, I'll show you sort of, let's zoom down to my legs here. So pretty good support by my legs, but because I don't have to have my feet onto a gas or brake pedal, I actually have a little bit more flexibility in my seating position, which to me, makes it feel more comfortable. And again, handlebars compared to a steering wheel, again, I think they offer some advantage. Uh, you know, never think to do that in a wheeled vehicle, uh, but to me, it just makes it very, very comfortable as well. One thing I didn't show you is uh, forward, reverse, and neutral. So there's a uh, gear shift indicator down there. Why don't we just zip around, show you that as well, and we'll hop back, back out. So taking a look here in that wide angle view, you can kind of see my knees in the bottom of the shot there. That uh, gear indicator is down here. Let's just zoom all the way in. So forward, neutral, and reverse is all you need. So forward, neutral, reverse right there. Scroll up from there and you've got your, whoops, I've got my handlebars in the way. I should not go so tight. Uh, there's your high, low range gearing. So that's all of your gearing. And then of course your steering is on the handlebars there. So let's talk about who this is for. So obviously there's a lot of commercial applications for this. This thing can go where there are no trails, including through the water. And that has huge value to all kinds of commercial applications. Where I think Argo has done well is they've moved their lineup from where it was in the past, which was primarily a 
you know, business type of vehicle into a pleasure vehicle as well. This is in the 950, tons of power, tons of fun. It's got the speed that you would want to go down on trails, but it can go off trails. To me, this is something that is also fun now. This is something that makes sense as a side-by-side -side replacement, depending on where you are. So maybe you've got some property where, you know, you don't have the trails kind of carved out or you haven't got uh, access to everywhere because there's some swampy areas. This allows you to go absolutely everywhere. This is the Huntsman pack or Huntmaster package. It's got sort of that real camo. So again, if you're a hunter, this thing's going to get you out to places you can't get to and you don't have to worry about getting stuck in this because instead of having, you know, four sort of small wheels or massive mud terrain tires or something like that and hoping that you get through with this thing, it's just going to crawl through everything you need. And it's an action. It's an absolute blast to drive. It's just so different. It looks amazing coming at you. Just cool looking thing. So to me, this isn't going to replace the sport side by side, but what it is going to do is, per, is replace that utility type vehicle that can absolutely go anywhere. And then again, in the side by side market, you really need something with the prices of them now that is not just about fun, it's also about utility. So having the ability to fill a bed here, having it be able to swap out into a passenger compartment, having the ability to tow 1800 pounds and get that trailer through wherever you're towing it, that's where I think this thing has a lot of strength. So again, in its base form, you can get these much smaller. I'd love to review them as well, so let me know if you want to see some of them. But in its sort of peak form with the biggest V-twin engine, with all the cargo areas, with the big winch on the front, with this uh, extra sort of accessory enclosure kind of thing, and again, there's a whole bunch more accessories that we haven't shown you in this video, it really becomes a super, super versatile, long-lasting vehicle that you're not going to outgrow, right? It'll just do everything you need it to do, whether it's the winter, whether it's the fall, spring, summer, it doesn't matter. You can make it full convertible, go fishing in the middle of summer, in a little pond or something like that but you can also uh, you know use it all winter use it all all the time so to me super versatile vehicle absolutely interesting fun i'd love to get out one this summer or whenever i can get out in one uh, later time this one is sold it's going out but if you want to see more make sure you swing by mclean sports here in Fredericton, new brunswick and again if you made it this far in the video and you want to know more about these different models different trims different things maybe there's something that i didn't mention that i need to go do some more research on the mclean staff here is awesome they will tell me what i need to and i'll make sure i make more videos for you so help this video out if this is the kind of thing you want to see just something interesting for me uh give us some likes comments that kind of thing positive comments and again let me know what you want to see and we'll get it to you in the future thanks everybody for watching